How was it that one company managed to rise so high in the photography field, at one point becoming synonymous with a particular brand of it in fact? Only to then have as equally dramatic and rapid a fall right at the turn of the millennium? Well, that's a question we hope to answer for you today, because over the course of this video, we're going to be looking at the once mighty Polaroid. And as we do so, we'll hopefully give you some insight into how they came about, what got them to the peak of their powers, and what caused their decline after that. But before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos that we post every week. Let's begin. The story of Polaroid goes all the way back to 1937 when Connecticut-born inventor Edwin H. Land teamed up with George Wheelwright to start a company which would utilize each of their skills in innovation, allowing them to corner various markets of the business world in the process. And while they would later become far better known for their development of instant cameras, at least initially, their main market base was to be found in polarized sunglasses. After doing research into light polarization while studying at Harvard University, Land decided there was big money in developing a new range of sunglasses which would better protect their owners from the sun's rays. And so, convincing his partner of this, they would form the Polaroid Corporation together, getting right to work from there. But as continued technical innovators, the duo weren't content with just being sellers of sunglasses. No, for two people who would later be referred to as having been the apple of their day, it was always going to be imperative that they went further than anyone else by creating even more products people were in need of. That was why, using the polarizer technology they held the patent for, Land and Wheelwright would be able to build a very fruitful relationship with the U.S. government, creating such things as protective goggles for military dogs and infrared goggles for soldiers during World War II. In fact, so popular would this polarizer technology become that Kodak, the number one name in photography at the time, would come to Polaroid looking for help in developing some of their new products around this time. And the innovations that Land would help the Kodak company to create would ultimately lead to him first gaining interest in this new world too, as after falling in love with photography, he'd decide to change course with his corporation, moving them in the direction they would become more commonly associated with in the years to come. That was how in 1947, Polaroid would change the world when they launched their first model of instant camera, the Polaroid Model 35, with this becoming such a success that it quickly sold out of stores all around the country. And the reason for this popularity was the incredible ease of use as while Kodak cameras required film to be sent away and developed, only to be returned at a later date, Polaroid would allow budding photographers to take a picture and have it come out instantly with it taking only minutes to develop from there, right in front of their eyes. So, already having a head start on the industry leader then, Edwin Land continued to build and innovate this instant camera technology, when in the 1950s and 1960s, he was able to create a smaller and cheaper version of the Polaroid. And this would allow people who could never afford a camera before, the opportunity to purchase one. On top of that, the company's popularity only increased when in 1963, their first color camera, the Color Pack, was released, followed by their first teen-oriented camera, the Swinger, two years later. And it was during this era that Polaroid would gain another level of cultural cash over their competitors again when they became the go-to technology for many famous artists of the time, with the most high profile of these probably being Andy Warhol. The result of all this? By the end of the 60s, the company had achieved $400 million in sales, a staggering amount of money for the time. But that still wasn't enough for Edwin Land because, seeking to innovate even further and build on his reputation as the father of instant photography even more, he would create even smaller and more lightweight versions of the Polaroid camera in the years that followed, with these including the SX70. Yes, it seemed like Polaroid were on top of the world at this point with their product becoming so popular with the public that they were even starting to turn into something of a synecdoche, a word used to describe a piece that is often mistaken for the whole, like the way the British will refer to vacuum cleaners as hoovers, or the way people all over the world will refer to speaker systems as tannoys. You weren't just taking a photo anymore when you snapped something with your camera. No, you were taking a Polaroid. So it's understandable then that the company felt like they pretty much owned the rights to instant camera technology altogether, with this being what led them to successfully sue Kodak for over $900 million when they tried to put their own similar product out onto the market a couple of years later. But of course, the good times rarely last forever. 
And as the 70s were starting to draw to a close, it would be Polaroid who made a mistake, which ended up costing them. This mistake, of course, turned out to be the introduction of Polavision, Polaroid's attempt to move into the home movie camera market in 1977. So convinced were the company that this would be a success, in fact. They'd even made plans to start producing their own purpose-built video player systems, which consumers could use to view these films. Unfortunately, though, the timing of this turned out to be poor, because with the popularity of videotape-based systems like Betamax and VHS skyrocketing, it left little space on the market for Polaroid's more expensive option. And this meant that, after selling only 60,000 units worldwide and causing the company to report an estimated $89 million in losses, Polavision would be considered a failure. And Edwin Land, the very man who had founded Polaroid and acted as its CEO for so many years, was forced to step down. But that wasn't the end of their woes, as it turned out, because despite once being considered the height of cool when it came to cameras, around the same time as Polavision was failing, the rise in cheaper, easier-to-use 35mm film version would begin to eat away at much of their market share in still photography too. On top of that, with single-use cameras, one-hour color film processing and videotape camcorders starting to become commonplace themselves, the once-mighty Polaroid Corporation would see themselves be hit hard. And all this would lead to the company being forced to make sweeping changes to their business during the 80s, including having to lay off thousands of staff and close many factories. Then, in what turned out to be the final nail in the coffin, the digital camera revolution would come in the late 90s and early 2000s, sealing the fate of the company. Now that said, it wasn't like Polaroid didn't see this one coming and try to prepare for it as a result. No, in fact, they were one of the early manufacturers of digital cameras as it happened, with the introduction of the PDC-2000 coming in 1996. Unfortunately for them though, while they may have once had the Midas touch when Edwin Land was at the helm, at this point in time, their product simply couldn't match up to others out there, leading to them failing to capture a meaningful foothold in that market. And the exact same thing would happen when they tried to introduce a series of scanners into their line of products soon after this, with all these failures ultimately leading them to filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2001. But even this in itself turned out to be a controversial move, because using some legal loopholes during this process, the company was able to stay afloat under the different name of Primary PDC Inc. And as they were doing this, those in charge were also able to ensure they would be accommodated with a series of large bonuses, all while stockholders and employees were left with nothing, not even having the ability to sell their own stock before leaving their jobs. Yes, it was a clear example of corporate corruption and something that is unfortunately all too common once a business grows to this size. And this same lack of good leadership is what most consider to be the reason for the company's downfall overall, as with the failure to fully understand what their customer base wanted when it came to new technologies, they went from being the cool kid on the block to a dinosaur in a matter of decades. But that isn't the end of the story as after years of attempts to revive the brand following this foreclosure, in the 2020s, Polaroid would start to see somewhat of a resurgence. And the reason for this is that, now being considered fully retro, a lot of people of the younger generation who are more interested in photography than ever have started getting into the vintage style which Polaroid offers. Of course, this has been helped along by the introduction of Polaroid filters on apps such as Instagram and Snapchat with those increasing the brand's popularity amongst the youth of the day tenfold. And that has ultimately led to Polaroid starting to successfully sell cameras once again for the first time in decades, with the Polaroid now being the first camera to feature their branding since the turn of the millennium. On top of this, many younger companies such as Polaroid BV and Mint Camera have begun making concerted efforts to refurbish and repair classic Polaroid products with some of these even modifying them while they're at it so as to allow them better functionality than they'd ever featured before. So, like a phoenix rising from the ashes then, it seems like the company that was once considered the peak of cool when it came to photography has been given the chance of a second life. And maybe then, this can be a lesson to us all that, even if mismanagement and corporate greed runs rife, even if the times pass you by for a while, the reality is that a good product will always be a good product. And given enough time, it will eventually find its audience all over again. But that's enough from us. Let us know your thoughts. Are you a Polaroid fan? If so, what is it that draws you to their products? And what do you think about their rise and fall? Leave us a comment down in the description.
As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos we post every week. Be inspired and we will see you in the next one. Since you made it all the way to this point, here are two more videos that YouTube thinks you are going to love. Go on, click on it and let's see if they are right.